Okay, so we are officially live on social media. Today is October 20th, and this is Reflection Artist Live number 49. And we have special guest, guests with us today, Greg Potler, who is co-owner of Detailed Image. So if you guys are not familiar with Detailed Image, they are a internet-based distributor for detailing slash car care products, and they are very well known. And for those of you who don't know, we'll get to know more about the brand, the company, and of course, the person behind that company making all the magic, Greg Potler himself. So we want to thank him for being on. He has 17 or a little over 17 years experience on the industry side of detailing as a distributor. Uh, he's a car care specialist and enthusiast when it comes to the products, a lot of testing, a lot of R&D. He has quite a few years under his belt of detailing himself, which he'll get into uh, in his early years of, of, of the startup of the business. But we want to thank him for being uh, special guest number 49 on the Reflection Artist Live. So Greg, let us know and talk to us about how everything got started for you in the wonderful world of detailing from those beginning years of everything. Well, first of all, thank you so much for having us on. I appreciate it. Yeah, uh, yeah it's, it's been a whirlwind. Uh, couldn't say it was anything I foresaw or you know, strategically planned out perfectly, but uh, so fortunate for the way that everything kind of formed here. Uh, basically, back in 2003, 2004, a buddy of mine bought an Audi S4, which was you know, way more car than we probably could have afforded, you know, uh, for, from our backgrounds. Uh, and then, you know, he, we were trying to take good care of it and we kind of researched some products and we realized there were some amazing products out there that just were not available locally. And we started using them and we're like, wow, this is just so much better than what we had been experiencing, you know, at our local store. So we started detailing more and more. We started detailing for friends and, you know, then we were like, Hey, let's start a business. Let's, we can do this. Let's just start detailing cars. And uh, he had also had a background in online sales with uh, totally unrelated uh, products. And he's like, you know, we should, we could sell the products as well. And, you know, when you're 21, you know, you're like, that's a great idea. We have, you know, we could do anything, you know, we have all the time and energy in the world. And he had uh, the platform and already established yeah, in his head and why yes, not, right? The distribution, you know, it's not that complicated. And, you know, we both had uh, business degrees at that point. And um, I was going, I didn't know what I wanted to do with myself. So I was so happy to have, you know, try this. And at the same time, I was in graduate school for, you know, getting an MBA. So more learning more about business, essentially. Uh, so we started, we started detailing cars and we started selling products uh, right out of mom and dad's basement. So, uh, you know, it's a cliche story, but uh, tried and true, I guess, too, because uh, it keeps the bills really low in the beginning when it's really, really hard. Uh, just detailed nonstop. I think our first spring, you know, we were booked, you know, 40, 50 days in a row kind of thing, uh, you know, while going to school and then trying to sell products at the same time. So you're kind of learning new businesses and trying to be an expert at them at the same time too. So uh, that was uh, certainly challenging, but again, you're 21, you, you know, you got yeah. energy for days, you know, you work, <laughs> you know, 14 hours a day was nothing at that point where it's like, yeah. you know, now, I, now I don't water. know if I could just go. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Exactly. And, uh, I, and luckily, I, my school was exclusively in the evening hours, too. So I didn't have to go to school till 625. Super so yeah. yeah, so it was, uh, you know, detail usually from like seven to four, do customer service, ship out orders, leave by six and go to school. And, you know, in the you have to stay usually late for group projects and things like that. You stay till, you know, 930, 10, uh, come back and just repeat, you know, but, uh, it was exciting. It was fun. Uh, I loved every aspect of, of really all of them. Uh, I learned so much and it was, and it was also really good to do, uh, to be actually working on my business while I was in business school. So I could talk to professors. I, uh, did some of my case studies on my actual business too. And believe me, they, they, uh, you know, they were rough. They, they would tell you every negative they thought about your business and they had no problem telling me how, you know, the problems and challenges I would face and why don't you have a long-term strategic competitive advantage? They wanted all these, you know, they wanted me to invent something that had never been done before, um, which I appreciated them pushing me to, yeah. to just have something more unique and, you know, that's, you know, more easily sustainable, but it just wasn't exactly what I was looking for. But I appreciate that the, the they, what they were pushing me to learn. And, and the type and of I business did, that this is, it really didn't and doesn't still really have all that, like all these other yeah, legacy exactly. companies. Yeah, I mean, you know, obviously inventing something unique that's patented and that type of thing is obviously everyone would love to do that, but that's just not every business. You know, not every pizza shop is going to have, you know, some strategic competitive advantage, you know, and it's not yeah. always necessary. I, obviously, it's a great goal to have, but just there's many, many businesses that are very successful without that, too. But uh, but I was very fortunate. I had a lot of professors that were great that really cared about me um, and just, you know, while they were critical, 
it was all to make me a better business person. And it did. It pushed me to think about things that I didn't want to think about. You tend to focus on your strengths sometimes and neglect a weakness sometimes too. And uh, they don't allow you to do that. They're going to push you hard. So it, it was good in that sense. I got a lot of uh, pushback from them. And they did make me think about a lot of uh, things in my vision for the business too. And uh, I, I, I'm grateful for that opportunity during that time that I was able to to get that feedback while I was actually doing a business, as opposed to some theoretical thing that maybe I would do down the road. So I'm sure very that, that mentally you were so engaged because you were actually running a business compared to other students, right? That were just there for the, for the class and the education. You were actually physically doing this during the day on top of, you know, researching and educating yourself in the evening with these classes. So I'm sure you were more mentally engaged overall above most of the classmates. Absolutely. Some, some were there doing it very abstract or others worked in major corporations and we're just trying to get to like a manager status too. So I think both things, you know, they're not able to, if they have some great idea and you work in a 10,000 person company, you're not going to be able to just go implement it. Whereas I can go home and I could literally change and pivot right then. If I really thought strongly about something that was brought to my attention, I can do it right then and there. So that was really, really cool um, to, to just have that experience. It was just a very unique time. And also the business was so young that you can pivot as the yeah. business gets bigger and more mature, even, you know, the size we are now, it's hard. I can't just go change everything on a dime. Even we're still a small company, but we're not that small. I can just change yeah. everything that minute. We you have, have consistency now that you just, can't yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. We've, we've, we've learned things over the years. And also back then too, I mean, the internet was just e-commerce was just evolving so rapidly at that time too. And it was, so, it was still in its infancy too. So you know, everybody was learning so much. The platforms were changing so fast. Um, it was oh, just yeah. a very dynamic time there too. So I'll, I'll, there was a lot changing and it was very difficult to make decisions about what are you going to invest your time and your money into knowing that things you just did a year or two ago are now becoming less relevant or obsolete. And, you know, just think about some of the search engines that existed back then and the, the social media stuff that existed that yeah. just was gone so fast, you know? Yeah. Uh, so it, technology again, moving, but now it moves like, even quicker <laughs> yeah exactly exactly so that was the business side now during the craft side obviously with you getting your hands on these products that you enjoyed using and also selling them it probably gave you a good amount of uh r d time because during the day you were able to of course execute using them and figuring out what best they play in regards to results so you could actually give personal feedback on top of selling this over detailer called you He'd be like, yeah, my experience was this. Yeah, absolutely. No, I, I think I tested, I think our site right now, we're, we're somewhere in the, you know, we have 2000 plus products. I think I tested every single product we had had until like we got to like product, like right around like a thousand or something like that too. So I personally used every single product until then. Um, and it wasn't really until we, there was more and more SEMA launches um, mm -hmm. where all of a sudden there'd be, you know, 40, 50 new really cool items came out where then it becomes like, okay, do I wait a couple months where I can really get some solid testing or do I have to go on the reputation of this brand that they just created the latest and greatest and we're actually going to just grab it and we'll get some testing in it, but we're going to really hope that it's hitting all the specs that it said it did and the testing they did, we're hoping it's going to hit all that. But prior to that, I literally had tested you know, every single thing on the site extensively before it was on there. And like you said, I could speak to people from experience and that is actually the foundation of our blog, which is called the Ask a Professional Detailer blog, because literally in the beginning, you could ask us, I'm a professional detailer. I've literally used these products professionally. I know what works. I know what doesn't. And now that blog has transitioned into, you know, we have well over a dozen authors on there who are doing this stuff every single day, who are making content, creating posts based on their professional experiences and kind of just continuing on what I was doing on a much broader scale. And it's awesome too, because they're from all corners of the United States. So again, you have different temperatures, different backgrounds. Some people are, you know, huge into this brand. Other people are huge into it, you know, other brands. And it's great to have all their different feedback. Um, and that's what really helps us shape our store um, and, and our recommendations and what we're going to carry um, is that experience. So I'm using my own. I'm still detailing, you know, not as much as I would like, but, you know, I still detail quite a bit here. Um, but also counting on their feedback. And, and also it's good to have different voices too. I, I, yeah. In the beginning, it was exclusively, you know, my pretty much my own thoughts, you know, what I heard from my close circle, but, you know, we've extended it out to them. And, you know, their feedback. criticism and it gets those wheels turning like your professors did because it challenged you to be like, well, I wasn't thinking about it like that, but that's, that's, I have to think about that now. <laughs> Absolutely. I'm amazed though, you know, sometimes I'll hear about a product that I'm like, maybe I tried that a couple of years ago and it didn't really stand out to me. But maybe now someone's using it with the new pad combination or with a different polisher 
and they're getting a totally different result. So I got to go back and I got to challenge myself and what maybe my first assessment was. And, and also the reality is when I test a product, I might use it one, two, three times, and then I'm done. You know, I've made my assessment and I have to move forward with my decision. I got a whole another stack of products <laughs> I'm going to test. It's not going to get 50 t- passes with me probably. So, but, it, but that's what I, I got to count on a different circle of people, their feedback. And I have other people in the industry that I talk to. Um, that helped me, you know, shape some of the products we pick up. And again, I, I love that. I love, as I've gotten older, I like people challenging my thoughts more and more, you know, you, you kind of get into a line of thinking, or maybe you have, you think something has a certain reputation or brand as reputation, and you got to challenge that assessment, always be open-minded to new products, new brands. And it's really benefited the business too, to be perfectly honest, you know, um, you just got to be open-minded that something different might come your way and you might be surprised by the results. So I've, I've tried to always be open-minded and seek out points that are different than your own. Now with the craft side in your early years of hands-on, what did your, you know, services that you offer when you had a detail business during the day, you know, what did that look like in that time frame, that 2004 ish timeframe, what, what kind of services were you offering? Yeah, I think that like what I call high quality detailing was emerging, but it was still very new and it was still, I think, more challenging to uh, sell and to explain to a customer of why you're going to be so much more money than, uh, you know, a car wash place down the street from you that, you know, is going to crank out 100 cars a day kind of thing. So, you know, it was a lot of talking to people, explaining your service explaining what you're going to do, sometimes even demonstrating it too, or, you know, trying to, trying to get them on your website in 2004, you know, you had to send them a link, you know, yeah. hopefully they had the internet, you know, they could check it. Um, but most people, it was pretty easy sell. I mean, they're into their car. They, they understand that you've put time and research into products, into testing, into refining your methods uh, that, you know, you're worth what you say you are. And, you know, ultimately most, most of our customers were referrals anyway, they were friends of friends kind of thing, or someone who had heard about us. So luckily that kind of, you know, I think, I think that's still one of the best drivers obviously today for the business. And, uh, that, that kind of makes it easy after you get a little bit of a customer base rolling, uh, that, you know, you, it feeds itself. Yeah. That word of mouth is definitely key and that organic word of mouth, right. In your own market. And a lot of people tend to try to go outside of that when realistically right here in your own backyard, everything you need. Yeah. I, I've tried to always remember, I think everyone's always anxious to have new customers, but it's always service those ones you have, you know, try to maximize their return on what they've spent with you. And they'll, it always comes back to you, man. Always. If you put in hard work, you, you do right by people. It just, the positivity always comes back. There's always something I feel like I've, I've, I've gotten something back indirectly or directly from customers always, you know, as you take care of them, they always take care of you too. In the long run, it always works out or they don't say a customer, you know, it, one way or another, it's going to work out, you know, and, and you'll be a better business person for it. So with, with the premium approach to car care, with the products that were being used, where the category is more of a still a wax and sealant kind of category for you. Yeah. I mean, we were doing correction. Obviously it wasn't anything. I don't think it's anywhere at the level, you know, where I think today's corrections are, yeah. um, you know, in some ways you're always like, oh my gosh, I can't believe what we were doing back then. You know, three, four steps polishing sometimes, you know, you're like, and you know, you're probably moving maybe 30, 40% of defects sometimes, but you know, it, it would, the cars look significantly better and we weren't charging anywhere near, I think what is common now for polishing. Um, but yeah, we were doing some light to medium correction, you know, some of those headlights, you know, just basic interior stuff, everything from, you know, minivans to Bentleys. I mean, we had, I mean, we, at that point we were, we did what we, uh, whatever customer was, uh, was on deck. I mean, we didn't really discriminate. It doesn't matter to us really. And we, we always say too, we don't care whether you have a, a Ferrari Kia, it does not matter. If you love your car, we'll, we'll love it with you. And, and it's true. You have people who have you know, very inexpensive cars, but they love it. And that's all that really matters. And, you know, we have people who are multimillionaires who don't even really care about their car that much. They just want to clean. So yeah, 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 we we had to, we had to help uh, the customer get their Rolls Royce going because they hadn't driven it in so long that it wasn't working. And it was like, we had to charge the battery for them and everything. It was like, oh, that's, that was a, I wasn't expecting that, you know, when we're doing that detail. Now with you being, you know, as educated as you were on the business side, Was that something that while you were running your business, were you scaling it to figure out where your product cost went, where your labor cost was, so you had all that dialed in? And if so, what do you think or do you know what your labor rates were at the time? And I always just do this as more of a comparison to where the market once was so people realize where we've come from to where we are now, of course. Well, one thing that's hard is the business we had 
the numbers were intermixed at the time too. So like your take home income is kind of a reflection of both um, businesses. And the reality was the service side floated us. That's what really made money. The product side made nothing. And, and to be totally honest, I would say for the first four or five years of the business, we rarely, I mean, we looked at the numbers, but you're just in survival mode. I mean, it was just go, 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 make sales, detail, sell product, go, 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 go. As we hit years like five, six, seven, and we started getting a little more mature, we had more data, we started diving in and really looking at the numbers. And I would say by year 10, you know, we are living in the numbers. You know, we're more established. I have employees helping us. We had sold the service side of the business. We're now exclusively working on product sales. Um, you know, that was definitely different. And, you know, since, you know, maybe like I said, seven, eight, nine, ten, 10, we really started getting more into the numbers, more into the numbers. And we had better data. We started collecting more information. So we had that information and we really could hone in. And now we are really a data-driven business where we have to look at numbers to help us guide, you know, make decisions, you know, and that was one thing I learned in school was use data to make data-driven decisions. You know, shooting from the hip got a lot of, I, I mean, I like that. I like to just go, go, go and trust my instincts. And my instincts are good, but challenge that by looking at the data. Does the data back up your instincts? If they don't align, why? You know, and look into it further. And, and sometimes there's, there is a lot of data you can look into. Okay, what else could I look into besides this set of data? Is there something else I could look at that could help drive it? Can I pull my customers? Can I call some detailers I know? Can I talk to industry experts like yourself or manufacturer reps and get their input? You know, so I've done a lot of that and I've learned a lot of different ways to approach it. And when you don't have an answer, keep going. Don't just say, well, I just got to guess now, you know, see if there's more information you can get to help push you in a different direction. Talk to a detailer, talk to a competitor. You'd be yeah. surprised how, you know, competitor just has, it has this uh, almost like an inherently competitive thing. Like we couldn't be kind to each other, but it's not necessarily true. You know, I, I, I'm a big proponent of, I want my competitors to be doing well because if they're doing well, it mostly means the industry oh, is doing well. Oh, God. Yeah. I don't think there's likely I'm going to be the only one who's doing great if they're all doing terrible kind of thing too. So I'm believe it or not, I'm rooting for all my competitors and everyone. In this industry. I'm, I'm hoping that you know uh, the everyone does well and the whole industry rises up is you know my best hope. Yeah, and that's that mentality. I mean, I feel like that that old school mentality to say that's like from the 80s and 90s the the competitive side because the world was smaller to say you know the the markets were smaller yes, yep. the 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 space was smaller for each category of what was yes. being done yep. so now that the categories are bigger the world bigger it's like yeah the, the more people that are on board with doing this or charging that or offering yeah. this mm -hmm. it makes it all better and yeah they're not i mean they're just they're, we're all in business we're just doing it differently right that's mm -hmm. what sets us apart as competitors but yeah. we're in the same arena it's like it's like football players, right? We're all playing for the NFL. We're just on different teams. Yep. Yep. Exactly. And, and I think, you know, to, I think exactly what you were saying too, you know, when I was doing the service, you know, your business was more local to the circle of people you knew and probably was more regional. Now with social media and everything too, it's easier to pull from markets that are a little further away from you. Uh, you know, you can go a couple towns over kind of thing and word about you might have gotten around from a friend of a friend kind of thing, too. So you're not competing so closely with the person, you know, a couple blocks down from you. You're really competing over a much larger area, too. And I, I really don't know many businesses who are like, I just couldn't exist because there was another detailer down the street from me and there just wasn't enough cars. I'm sure that happens, but I don't think it's the majority of cases, too. I think that's a mental yeah, I think it's the vast minority of businesses full because there was just too much competition. You know, this this service industries are as a whole are doing really well. You know, people want services done for them. We are all less inclined to be, you know, replacing a glass window if it breaks. You know, yeah. back in the day, my grandfather could fix that. Today, I wouldn't have a clue where to start, you know, kind of thing. So, just and, Google. You know, yeah, exa <laughs> exactly. Yeah. And most likely you're going to land on a service that's going to help you do it too. Yeah. Um, and circling back to your labor question, your cost. Oh, man, it was terrible. I mean, like I said, service floated us and made us our money. But I mean, we weren't charging nearly enough um, back in the day. And I kind of actually wanted to just uh, to pivot on that, too, which was like I went to like, my first SEMA. It was around like 2011, maybe 2010, too. And the, and the detailing industry even there was still relatively small. It wasn't a huge presence there. And I think detailing, we kind of just like we were kind of like like an odd fit there at SEMA. It was kind of just like, okay, we kind of put them in the corner and yeah. detailing, you know, still some people say, you know, what's detailing? Is that when you put the flames on the car? You're like, no, that's, that's not what detailing is. <laughs> and I think since then, my mentality has shifted both personally and the industries has where I think 
people know what detailing is now. I think just even just like friends and family, random people I meet, they just know what detailing is. It has totally evolved. I give a lot of credit to the IDA and just, you know, the industry, you know, I think the, the manufacturers have all done a great job of stepping up. And I think we can all yeah. hold our head up here and you don't have to be like, I, I do detailing, you know, like, and, you know, you should be boastful about it and, you know, be very proud of it. And I think it's something, it circles back to what do you charge? You should be charging, you know, similar to maybe what a mechanic charges, you know, no one blinks twice when the mechanic charges you, you know, however many dollars per hour. Now it's absurd almost, um, you know, I don't think we're, I don't think detailers should be too far off that, you know, I think it's a great service. I think we've honed our craft. I think it's based in facts and, you know, great processes with great products and we shouldn't be afraid to charge what you're worth. No, I agree. And, you know, in comparison to a mechanic shop, nine times out of 10, a detailer shop is going to be much cleaner. <laughs> oh yeah. Yeah. And, and you know what you're getting. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you can see the results at the end of the day. Yeah. I do like the fact that you had mentioned about how you use the service side to float you because that is huge. Yes. That for those that are, you know, that have will watch this or listen, that's something that whether you stay in the industry, stay in the trade or stay in it for business, it is still a, a resource for you to make money to support mm -hmm. yourself, whether it be for pivoting onto another business or even some people have used it to get through school. I've, I've had some guests oh, yeah. that have told me that it paid for their whole college and it's like mind blowing. So when people are like, I can't do this, I don't have the money. It's like, if, if you're not scared to work and sweat a little bit, Mm -hmm. and, and even the basics of, of detail and services could make you money to where it supports that and get you through to where you want to be. It may not be where you want to be now, but at least it's, it's a good foundation. And nowadays, I mean, gosh, you could sit outside of a convenience store or Walmart and offer headlight restoration for 50 mm -hmm. bucks a pop while the customers in there going shopping. Yeah. I mean, there, there's window tinting. There is oh, know, yeah. glass, glass repair. There's all these other extensions too. I mean, it, it's a, it's a great business in the sense that it's challenging and difficult and you could always be a student of it and always learn more. But at the same instance, you can get really good really fast too. If you really dive into it, you're watching the videos, you're out there practicing, honing your craft, you know, go to, a, go to some of the training things that are offered through the IDA or otherwise, you know, you can get really good really fast and you can make good money really fast. I, there's not many other industries that I can think of where you can go out and within, you know, a very short period of time, you could be legitimately making good money to float you through college or as a second career. Maybe, you know, you, you have a, a job that you're able to work part time and this isn't a great addition to it. I know lots of people who even people have great jobs. They just love detailing on the side. They do a couple of cars a week or a couple of month, and it's all their extra money. They're like, that's what, you know, I wanted a second car. This is what pays for the second car. You yeah. know, I wanted yeah. to go travel. This is what pays for travel. So it is a great career path. And, and, and I think also, so it might be one of those things where you, if you look online, you start looking at some of these shops, they're so elaborate. They have these cameras and all this. And it's, and that's great. And I'm sure oh, it works really? for some businesses, yeah. but don't fall into the trap that that's what your business has to start off as we started no. in, we said, we started in mom and dad's house, mom and dad's garage. That's where this whole thing started. It wasn't anything fancy. I mean, we bought good equipment, but I mean, you don't have to spend a fortune. You don't have to have every polisher on the market, you know, do some research, you know, invest in some quality stuff, but you know, you can do this for a couple thousand dollars, you know, at most, I mean, and get yourself started. So again, a very low barrier to entry because you can get the information, you can test on people's cars, you can get great products for a relatively low cost and you're off and running, you know, it's not that complicated to start. Now it can evolve and you can get, make it big and you can, you know, get into a big business, but it's just such a great business to get into, especially for, I think, any young professional, anybody's hardworking and just loves the satisfaction of like, here's your keys. And you see the, the satisfaction of that customer's face too. Oh you get to, my God, exactly. this is amazing. I, I get mad sometimes if I wasn't able to uh, actually personally pass the car off to a customer. I'd be mad because I was like, I love that satisfaction of seeing them be like, wow, I cannot believe that's my car again. You know, it's unbelievable. And that's, you know, you get, so you get the gratification that, you know, the instant gratification just about, uh, so again, I, a, a great industry. I can't say enough for it. And I'm so grateful to it as well, too. I'm so grateful for the customers and everybody I've met in the industry. And like I said, I've been doing it for 17 years. And I told you uh, before this too, I, I get up and I, I love my job every day. I love the people. I, I love the challenges that come forth from this. And uh, I, I absolutely love it. No, it's, that's good stuff. And I, same way. And it's one of those things as a, as a, operator of a shop still with all the hats I have I still love being able to see the car in and see it out for the customer it's just something about being you know the detailer in me that mm -hmm. I just love that 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 gratification of the customer and for myself to know that another job well done 
it, and it feels weird when I don't get to deliver the vehicle sometimes. Yeah, yeah. And it's yeah, like, you. oh, you know, <laughs> but yeah, I love it. But going back to now where when you did start and the products that you did bring in, what does that look like when you, you know how many SKUs you had then? I mean, you know now where you're at, but how many yeah. SKUs did you start with and how did that evolve? Yeah, that's a great, great question. Uh, I would say it's somewhere between like 100 SKUs maybe in the beginning and kind of quickly we went right to like to 200 because we realized we really didn't have a line of products. You know, we, did, we couldn't even sell you uh, an entire detail at that point. We just didn't have enough. So, um, and that's kind of what I was uh, saying before too was, the service really floated the product sales for a long time because, you know, when you go from 100 SKUs to 200 SKUs, that takes a lot of money. And it all came from the service side. The service side paid for all that. And that's when we paid ourselves very little because uh, inventory is challenging. Uh, I think we kind of talked about this before, which is uh, it's difficult. You're constantly turning over you know, new money into new items. And you can kind of fall into that cycle of just, okay, you've made a little bit more, but you got to get new items or you got to even stock more of the same items too. So you're kind of having both, you're, you're hitting it on both yeah. fronts. And then it's, oh, well, we now we have to expand. We have to do something different because the business has grown. That takes money and it can become a vicious cycle. And if you, even if you watch shows like Shark Tank, they'll talk about that. Like this is one of those businesses where I'm nervous you're going to get into an inventory loop, which is you're just spending and then it comes in, it goes right back out in and out and you're not actually able to take it. And that's really hard. And it's, it's our industry is hard. There's the margins are going to be tight. It is not an easy place to be um, from that standpoint. But going back, like you said, the, the, the service 100% saved us because that really is what made us actual profit and gave us a tiny little salary that we could survive on along with, uh, you know, allowing us to grow the product side of the business. Now, were there any brands that you were able to bring in that made you stand out from other internet based distributors that were more exclusive to the, the detailed image brand? Yeah, I, I believe we were one of the very first to start selling the actual flex polishers in this, you know, in this segment. They, they were, they had the grinders, they had some of that, but we were one of the first to really bring that in. Uh, we had brought in Dodo Juice. I know we were one of the first there. Um, you know, there was a couple other things that we had. And, the, and, and again, remember, you couldn't just go on Amazon and buy these things. They just weren't yeah. out there in 2004, 2005. So um, actually, it was hard to even communicate with distributors. Some of them didn't have websites. Some of them only had a phone or they had a website, but they didn't answer anything on there, their contact form. So it was actually really, really hard just to get the ball rolling with places. And you'd say, hey, we're detailed image. They, we'd never heard of you. But it, where's that? You know, uh, so you know, it, it was a challenge just to actually get manufacturers to want to even talk to you and do business with you. And online sales were very foreign to them at that point. Some, some had it, some had no clue what it was. So now, it was, what are you going to do? Why? Yeah, How much yeah exactly. <laughs> and, and who are you guys? You know, and, you know, are you, I don't remember you guys or many of the shows like, well, we, we just started last year and that's, you know, that's not exactly a ringing endorsement, but you know, you, you, <laughs> you sell them on yourself and, you know, ultimately everybody who was willing to hear us out, I think, was always willing to give us a shot too, but it was, but it was literally hard just to get people on the phone. Um, but, you know, I said, going back to your point of, we actually tested the products. I knew when I tested that flex polisher, I was like, this, this is the real deal. I was like, this just blows, you know, I've had the Porter cables. I'd had rotaries. I'm like, this was its own unique thing. And I knew right away, this was going to be a big deal. So uh, we were, we were early on that. And that was another big help too. When you start selling, you know, $400 plus polishers, that was really big boost for the business. It was like, okay, this is, you know, this is what we have to do is find these marquee products that do stand out. And it was a good reminder to keep looking, keep you know, talking to people at SEMA, keep going to the shows and figure out what is new and, uh, you know, and not falling for the hype too, trying to read between yeah. the lines of, you know, someone out there claiming, oh, this is the most durable wax ever made. I mean, I've heard that so many times and you start figuring out how do you sort through that, you know, because I, I don't want to go into every conversation saying, well, this guy's lying. Yeah, but I'm also not credit them out the gate. But exactly. But I'm also not naive either, too. So, you, yeah. uh, it, you know, as you said, uh, with experience, you know, going to school, learning different things, how, what questions do you ask? How do you ask other people in your industry for information, too? Um, do you have any science based you know, studies? Have you done any side by side testing? You know, do you have any independent comparisons that you could do? Do you have any detailers, you know, independent of your business that would, you know, make that assertion as well, too? So you, know, you, you learn tips and tricks like that, too, to help you find out what you want. And sometimes that's just enough to get us to test the product. We, we, are, we are bombarded with so many products from so many places. You know, you got to learn those tips and tricks of how do you sort through that and figure out what you even want to look at, what you want to test. Um, and also, I could like something as much as I want. I also have to respect is our customer for it too. 
yes. you know, I can, can I can help, I can help create a customer base, but it always helps if there's some demand already there too. So it's finding that balance of, I believe in an item and can we actually bring it to market and get some, you know, sales? Cause ultimately we have to have some sort of sales for a brand to work. I'm, I'm always willing to stick my neck out and say, we, we got to try it. I, I believe in this product. Let's, let's stick with it. Let's push for sales. Um, even if it's lagging and, and a lot of times we can bring those brands up and eventually the, you know, the, the best usually rise to the top, but you know, there are times it's just difficult. It just, it's not that the product's bad. It just might be good. And it might be, there's other items in that category that are great. And that's Time. hard sometimes too. Yeah. Yeah. And what's their marketing? You know, you hate to say it, but marketing does matter too. You know, ultimately I want the best product just to win on its own, but there is a reality that, you know, sometimes how product being well marketed matters too. So, and also what, what resources are they putting out there? Are they doing training seminars? Do they have YouTube videos? Are they on Facebook? Are they on Twitter? Like that all matters too. So not that it necessarily any one of those defines the business, but you know, it, every one of those can help. It adds value overall, but if Absolutely. they're not doing it, 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 then where's the value? Yeah. And, and just ultimately, how are we, and I said collectively, because, you know, every person I do business with, I consider it to be a we, you know, I'm looking for them and us to be successful together. And in combination with our customers, I want them to be happy as well. And, you know, sometimes if you, if you feel like the manufacturer is maybe not fully vested in that, or just doesn't maybe partner in the way you're looking to partner, you know, it just, it may not be a fit for us. And that happens, you know, some, it's not necessarily that products are bad. It just, it may not work our customer base and maybe the way we're marketing are just maybe not going to jive with them. Maybe they're, they've shifted and they're going to go kind of exclusively into the body shop world. And that just may not be where we're going to be, you know, the best partner for them too. And there's nothing wrong with that. Sometimes you just have to say, shake hands and say, Hey, like, you know, best of luck to you guys. And let's keep an open line of communication and maybe we'll do business again in the future. But for now, we probably just have to go in different directions and, you know, that happens all the time and it's no hard feelings. And a lot of times, you know, I've circled back with those people. We still talk to each other or maybe we do business down the road. And, you know, I've left every one of those, I think, on relatively good terms. And, you know, it's just part of the business. It's not necessarily my favorite part, but. No, but I know, think you, that's retail in general, right? No matter what you're selling. I think that comes with retail in general overall when you get into that side of it. Absolutely. I mean, in, in the same thing with the service side too, you were not going to have a hundred percent customer satisfaction. There's going to be some customers who are going to be challenging and you're going to have to just say, you know what, I, I, you know, maybe a different shop is best for you. And maybe you wouldn't say that, but you know, I think that's the line of thinking is that it's okay if this yeah. person doesn't call we're me We're just back. not you a know? good fit. I have a feeling that we're, we're yeah, gonna have yeah. I mean, it, it's, it's fun. avenues. <laughs> yeah. I always say there's always that, you know, like that, whatever that 0.1% that it's just okay. That if you guys just don't jive together, that it, you just have to move on and, you know, to work really hard on the other 99 plus percent, but there's, you know, sometimes it just doesn't fit. So that that's totally fine. Yeah, I know. And I can imagine, I mean, the good thing for you, I mean, you went from, you know, getting a hold of these manufacturers and explaining yourself to where now, you know, they're asking you left and right randomly, Hey, can you carry this? Do you mind carrying this? Will you, you yeah. Know? And it's, so it's a good position. I mean, obviously you've got the 17 year plus track record too. Right. Um, yeah. It is. And, and also it's just easy to get a hold of people now. I mean, everyone's got, you know, Facebook, Twitter. I mean, there's yeah. no company that really doesn't have much of that anymore too, but it was, you know, 2004. I mean, some people barely had a phone number. I mean, you were like, you know, trying to figure, you're looking up things in like business listings of how do I get a hold of some company calling random old phone numbers and just hoping you can get through kind of thing too. Uh, and yeah, you learn a lot. You know, I didn't have connections in the industry. I didn't have someone over, you know, in the West Coast. Maybe I could just call up and ask, hey, do you know this company? Could you get me in touch with them? You know, now yeah. it's just so much easier too. So oh, yeah. both things, we, we grew and, you know, just in general, it's easier to uh, reach out to people. Now with, with everything you did, of course, the business side, the craft side, let's talk about this blog that you got going because yeah. that right there, that's super rich in content, right? Yeah, I've benefited you. from it. Um, and many of details in general, but just from my own personal experiences in my early days, that was one of a few resources that were on the market, but that helped a lot because it, it, it was a no BS kind of blog and still is. So how did that develop and where did you start vetting the guys that are part of that team of bloggers to get that content out? Well, first off, thank you for the compliment. And I'm, I'm incredibly grateful that you and a lot of other people, um, when I go to SEMA, that is the number one question I get asked is like, uh, it's from the manufacturers say, how do we get more content on that blog? Or like, you know, how come, how come you haven't featured any of our products on there yet? Uh, so it, it's great to know that it, it, you know, people I really respect and admire in the industry are asking me that question as in, like yourself. And it, it's a tremendous compliment, really. I mean, I can't thank you and everybody else enough. It means the world that people are reading the content on there, but really the Genesis came back to when we actually sold the products was, uh, and we were doing the service, excuse me, and sold the products. Uh, 
we actually, you know, you could ask me, I was a professional detailer. So it was ask a professional detailer was the, was the genesis of it. If you have a question, we want to answer. And we used to go on forums. I mean, I probably have tens of thousands of posts, if not 50,000 posts, probably on various automotive forums. I would just go on there and just answer questions. So we started a thread on there, ask a professional detailer. And it was just ask us questions and we'll try to help answer it. No matter what it is, whether we can sell a product to you or not, it didn't matter. Um, you know, we just wanted to answer questions and we'd be like, we should put some of this content on our website instead of just posting it on random forums. Uh, we should start, you know, home, getting more of that content in a database where people you know, it's more universal and easier to find and organized and whatnot. And, and then we kind of expanded it into, well, we need help. We want different perspectives on there. So let's get other authors on there too. So we kind of looked for different authors across the country. You know, people just have a lot of great detailing experience. Uh, really, you need kind of three things. You need a lot of great detailing experience. You got to be able to capture it in some way, whether it was photo, video, or something. It had to be, you have to have some ability to capture it so you can, you know, our industry is a visual industry. There has to be some way to explain it on there yeah. too. And then you got to be able to write a little bit too. You don't have to be, you know, some wordsmith, but you got to be able to communicate, yeah. you know, what you're experiencing and get that out there to customers. So basically if you had those three skills, we're highly interested in having you write for us. And really there, there are, we do have some structure to the blog, but really all I wanted was for them just to just give us their honest opinion. And there really was no real criteria from us other than make sure you explain yourself really that was it it was really just like you know take your time review a thing review a product or explain what you're doing any process you're doing and just explain it in as much detail as you can and that was really it we just wanted to share information from professionals um not that consumers don't have a lot of good experience too but we wanted people who had used 20 different waxes to then give that review as opposed to someone who used their third wax just may not have a full perspective on it too whereas a professional is going to and, um, you know, again, when people sell us, you know, we, I have the most durable wax ever. I, I lean into the professional community. If it is the most durable thing ever, you know, like some of the, what was the silicone based waxes back in the day, you know, that way they're claiming these outrageous warranties of lasting years and years, you know, all that. I, w- I would say, if that's true, somebody in the professional community would be using this product. Somebody would have discovered it yeah. and said, hey, this is great. I can charge a forge. I can charge more because I'm using the most high quality products, the most protection out there. And rarely, if ever, then the professional community come back and say, yes, I'm using that product, you know? So uh, getting their input and having them be the voice on there. And also I, I like, in the beginning, it was a lot of my voice on there. I liked distancing myself from it and hearing from different people who are really not, affiliated with detail image. They don't make any money necessarily from promoting something or saying they like it kind of thing too. So I kind of like stepping back and letting them do it because I think it kind of distances, you know, detailed image from the thought. I want it to be purely the author's words on there. Pure and organic. Yeah. I mean, obviously it's on a website where, believe me, I'm, I'm happy to sell product on there too. Don't get me wrong, but I just want the content to be just purely the author's thoughts, whatever. I mean, we don't do like any editing minus like fixing a typo kind of thing from the authors. There's really nothing from us done. It's purely their thoughts there too. So it's a great, it's a great resource. And you know, I know it's great. When I was detailing, I was like, Oh, I don't remember how to, what the order was. Oh, let me go check my own blog. And I'm literally on my phone in my own garage <laughs> checking my website. So uh, I was like, wow, that's a great resource. I'm like that. I forgot how good that article was from three years ago. And uh, it's really helped me through like detailing. And uh, sometimes my family will be doing something and they, they call me and they ask me how to do something. And then when they've called me for the hundredth time, then I'll send them a link to my own blog. I'm like, it's right here. It's like, I'm, I'm, I've already done this three times for you. Here you go. Here's the, the video you know, that it kind of explains that. So no, it's been a great resource. And, and honestly, I just hope that people will look into it. And it just has so much information from so many different brands, so many different steps in the detailing process from the smallest, littlest step, you know, how do you work around trim or debadge and these kind of the ancillary things to, to, you know, how do you do a one-step, a two-step, a three-step process, you know, to how do you start a business? It's got everything on there. We have the work-life balance stuff on there. We have an author who had a health condition on there and he explained what that was like and what he went through there and how it kind of related back to his business. So it's got everything on there that, you know, similar to the podcast, just it kind of delves into every aspect of detailing. It's not just about polishing. It's about a lot of other things. How do you stock your inventory? How, what software do you use on the back end? How do you do your billing? You know, all that stuff is kind of uh, talked about in there. Now you started with a small handful of authors And then it grew, of course, Mm because of growth and it happens. How did you pick these authors? Did they come to you? Did you go to them? How did that work out as you grew uh, that catalog of authors? 
It's a great question. It's kind of like the your service business. If you said, where do, we, where do you get your customers from? It's kind of like, well, it's a lot of referrals. It's some of my friends. I went to a show and I met this person. It's similar. Um, you know, we started with a great group of guys. We still have some of our original authors on there from back in, gosh, I don't even remember what it was, like 07 or something like that, 08. You know, we still have some of those original guys around. And we're still friends with some people. You know, they've had to move on and do other things with their life. Uh, but it was referrals. It is some people have requested it. Um, and we have, you know, conversations back and forth. Sometimes I'll call them. We'll talk for a bit, just get to know them a little bit more. And again, I want to see those three things. I want to know what's your level of experience, you know, what, how are you going to be able to capture this? And can you show me a writing sample where you have, you know, shown your ability to communicate what you know? Cause it is partially about, you can know all you want. You got to be able to communicate it, you know, yeah, both visually and through text. Yeah. So it's got to be a combination of that. And you don't have to have like, you have to be the world's most experienced detailer. It's not necessarily about that. Um, you know, we have guys on there who have only detailed for a couple of years, but they live this industry. They've been great, um, you know, you know, influencers or, you know, they've been, they've been highly uh, involved in the community. And I respect that too, that it's not purely about experience, you know, or longevity and you know, length of uh, your professional uh, career. Um, it's obviously a factor, but uh, yeah. And then we, we go out, we've actually recruited a few people too. We're like, man, this person is an incredible writer. We're like, he takes incredible photography. We're like, we gotta, we gotta talk to this person see if they want to do it. So it, it's going every direction. We've had people solicit us. We've gone the other way. Um, and anybody wants to apply, you know, is anybody's welcome to join there too. Um, there's really no uh, limit. We don't like necessarily say we need this many people or we we're, we don't have any real like set limit. We just, when we, we see somebody great or, you know, we're, we're always welcome to add. And I think we're up to like, gosh, like 15 plus authors right now. And it, and, and it evolves over the time too. You know, someone who's been doing this 10 years sometimes is like, I'm done, man. I've written 10 years. I'm just, I've written so many topics yeah. or, you know, I, I have two down to time, right? Sometimes yeah. We, we have some of the people who are, he's a full-time engineer at a, at a big company. Um, you know, he does detailing on the side. So this writing is kind of like almost like a third career for this person too. So I was yeah. amazed how long they did it for too. So, you know, we have people who have big families or they have, you know, serious like health issues pop up and sometimes it's just, you know, writing is going to be a bit too much. So, you know, we totally get that and we try to be flexible, um, but if they can't write, you know, it's totally fine. We just move on and, you know, sometimes it's just what's best. And it, it is a big time commitment too. I think some people are like, you know, they don't realize that, you know, writing a post that you want to put your name behind, you, you know, it's a little bit more than a tweet. It's a little bit more than a Facebook post. You're going to want to put a little effort into it and, you know, getting, as you know, getting the right photo, getting the right content, it takes time. So, um, it is a, a decent time commitment. And that's, that's really the, the hardest part for people is everyone, you know, what we're all short on is time. You know, yeah. and I want people to have a great work-life balance. I don't want the, the blog to be a burden. Um, so we're excited. We try to, we try to paint a realistic picture. I don't mean to be gloom and doom. Like it's, it's so hard. Um, cause it does, it, it is in line with what you do and you can kind of max it. Yeah, I'm already doing a detail. So let me capture some of it and I'll write about it later. So, I mean, that can work out nicely, but I also want to be realistic that it's going to be, you know, more time onto your week. And I just want to be realistic that you really want to make that commitment to it. Um, and we're so fortunate. We have so many great authors on there who have done so many amazing articles, and we try our best to take care of them as well because we are really, really grateful for the content. And it, and it really has bettered the detailing community. I can't tell many people were like, I was stuck. I didn't know what to do here. I read your blog and I changed up what I was doing and it totally helped me finish. I was on this rock hard paint and it, you know, gave me some insight on maybe what I wanted to do here. Or I was having, you know, I had to make a decision whether I was going to hire somebody or not. I didn't know if I was ready for it. And I read a couple of articles on your site about, you know, people who have worked with other people, how that went. Um, so just things like that. Yeah, and then with you now, I mean, with you having so many different brands and mm -hmm. things of that nature, it puts you into a network of all these manufacturers directly. And I noticed that you've had guest posts or guest blogs from yeah. some of these manufacturers. So it kind of vets the process and it adds a new twist to it too. So you're not just yeah. getting it from those authors, but it's added value to the whole blog from the direct manufacturer itself, which is really neat too. Yeah, absolutely. I, I love having manufacturers come on there because they are such great resources. And I think also for most part, you know, we tell them there's no shilling on there too. Like, you know, don't come on here and say best unless you are going to absolutely prove yeah. it beyond a doubt on there. And none of them do. I mean, everyone comes on there and just gets it. Like, let's have a conversation about these items. What was the genesis? What, why did you even pursue this? Or where did the, the new technology come from? Was it a new sort? Is there a new foam being developed someplace yeah. that, you know, kind of was the inspiration for it? Or was our problem you guys identified that you wanted to solve, you know, commonly, you know, for like buffing pads, it's okay. How do we get down from a two-step down to a one-step? Can a pad help us accomplish that? You know, and, and understanding that is great to hear, 
well, why did you start? Or, hey, this pad was specifically designed now for new long throw polishers. So like, oh, that's that's interesting. I get why wow. you did it, as opposed to just yeah. developing some random new thing. So having manufacturers come on there is really beneficial. And I think it opens up people's eyes. It's like, well, I've always done it this way, but I understand why they were tackling this problem and why they created this item. And I do want to give it a shot now too. So I think, you know, ultimately, yes, it does sell product and I'm, I'm grateful for that, but I'm just glad that it gets information out there so a consumer can make an informed decision on what's best for them. 100% agree. Now with moving forward, are you going to be attending SEMA this year, walk around or anything like that? No, I hope to go next year, but it was just too crazy this year. I just didn't know. And I know some of the manufacturers had to pull out of it too. I just was a little nervous. It was going to be a little bit of a down year for the show. And just for, you know, precautionary reasons, I didn't want to have any of my staff there too. So we will not be attending this year, but we're hopeful that 2022 will be a very different year for everybody. And uh, we can resume some normalcy. And I, and I know a lot of the manufacturers are anxious to go back. That's something that weren't able to go this year. Now with you, um, and it will say other manufacturers that are showing up that are going to do releases. Some may do it at the show. Some mm -hmm. may do it based on their website. Obviously, as a distributor for these manufacturers, those releases for the brands that you offer, that's going to be something that you post and engage in as well for Absol those releases. Absolutely. You know, definitely check out our social media pages, you know, at Detailed Image. We will have it all covered there. We already got some heads up on quite a few things that I think are going to be pretty exciting. Um, definitely some, you know, occasionally a manufacturer says we are not telling anybody this will be totally ironclad secret up until SEMA. And that's always exciting too. So I think there's a couple of those out there that we will not be hearing about ahead of time, but I do know of a few things that are coming out that I think people should be pretty jacked up about. Um, and a couple of, I've gotten a couple of teasers from the manufacturers who are kind of saying, stay tuned too. So I don't know, I might get something right before SEMA and that always helps us too. So we can get a little content ready and make sure we do our best to cover it. But sometimes we're literally covering it on the fly. We're, we're live streaming from the show and we're watching it and we're reporting it. We're trying to get our reps to send us the information so we can get it out to you guys as soon as possible. And then there's always that, uh, the million dollar question every customer asks at the end, when can I get it? I yeah. want the product. So that's always the worst one to answer too, because especially now, yes. Yeah, so um, if there was ever a time, it would be terrible to whatever they tell me, I'm going to add two months onto it no matter what. And I'll probably still be off, but um, you know, that, that is always the million dollar question of when can I get, it? I want to try it. And uh, I wish I always had a better answer for it, but uh, you know, we'll see some manufacturers are really close and they have it all dialed in. Others are, you know, we're hoping to have it in six months or a year. Uh, you just don't know, but we'll be covering everything from SEMA and there is a lot coming out. I think last year was so chaotic too. That I think a lot of companies had to push back some stuff they were working on. So I do think you're going to see a little bit of a rebound this year. I think there will be not the last, I think last year had an okay amount, but I think this year yeah. there will definitely be some last more year's a learning curve too. Right. You know, and how to take that approach if it happens again. Yeah. And I think everybody kind of just pumped the brakes a little bit with the unknown. Everyone said, we're not going to rush, rush, rush this item because you'd be amazed how many companies, I mean, they're working tirelessly for months right before SEMA to get a product launched. I mean, there's just, yep. you know, revisions, complications, the labels wrong, you know, they have to make all these tweaks. It's real. it's a, it's very complicated and they are rushing literally to the last minute to get something launched. And I think companies last year said, no, we're not going to, we're not going to, you know, kill ourselves and, you know, push the entire staff to work their rear ends off for a show that may or may not take place. And, you know, we're not even sure we can get everything. So I think, you know, appropriately, I think companies pumped their brakes a little bit last year and it took a little longer, but I, but I think we're on the rebound. I think some companies have been working on some items and I, I definitely think you'll see quite a few things come out this year. And I think in well into next year as well, too, I think there's some companies have been working on some really cool stuff that will continue to come out next year. I think they're just dialing it in and making sure they can get their supplies because that's never been it, it's always challenging but it's never been harder than this moment no, right now yeah this this yeah it's, this is worst of worst right here so yes yeah, so i, will I be can available tell you just, will be there and that's that's it until it comes more <laughs> yeah no i mean that's it's hard too i don't like to cause like a panic among customers like you got to go get stuff right now but it is challenging right now we're ordering more than we've ever ordered you know at this time of year because we're trying to insulate ourselves the best we can but we, you know nobody's perfect i mean if you can't get stuff for months and months. Eventually we're going to run out too. So, you know, it's definitely a problem that we're all facing. And uh, as we've done this for 17 years, there's always something new. You always think it's going to, you're going to fall into some routine. And this is just one more chapter in that book of just, you know, your business is always going to evolve. There's always something new, whether it's your personal life or the professional, it's just, it's constantly evolving. It's constantly challenging. And I think it's a great thing. Honestly, I, I'm, I said, I'm, I'm, I'm I, I love what I do. I'm excited every single day when I get up. I love this business. I love this industry. I never, ever, ever think about 
like leaving it or I have a problem. I, I just like it. I don't know what it is. I just, I love the challenges with it. And as much as I, this has been a, such a challenging year, I enjoy the challenge. I think if it was yeah. the same every day, I don't think I would be enjoying it too. So no. uh, I, I, I enjoy the challenge as many, as many as there are. And sometimes I wish there was a few less, but it, it probably would also makes me happy and satisfied that, uh, you know, you, you figure it out eventually and you figure out how to get through it. Yeah. Challenge is a necessary evil that gives you drive. And there's a certain kind of person or certain something in you that makes that drive just, you know, get that obstacle to where you're either going to go around it, over it or through it mm -hmm. and make mm -hmm. it happen. Yeah. yeah pro problems sure. are just the things you haven't figured out a solution for yet. That's all <laughs> it is. You know, there's, it's always going to be something out there. And I said, everybody needs it. If something's too challenging, you'll eventually quit. You can't do it. But if it's too easy, you'll quit for that reason too. Everybody needs it right in the middle. And that's, it's different for everybody. You know, what is, is the appropriate level for you is just different. You know, some people want crave routine. Other people just can't stand routine and they need a lot of diversity. You know, I'm somewhere in the middle. I, I like my routine, but not too much of it. Uh, and the pandemic, believe me, has, uh, has disrupted that well uh, in many, many ways. So uh, it definitely has kept me on my toes. So with us on time and where we're at, what mm -hmm. are some last great words of advice that you could tell somebody, whether they are in a distributor position or detailer position, just something that you could throw out there uh, to maybe give some good advice and help for the community? Uh, yeah, I, I kind of always track back to perseverance, man. If you push through, believe in yourself and just keep working hard at your craft, if you constantly do right by people, I, I think the problems generally resolve themselves at some point in your life. And if, if you're having troubles, reach out to people in your industry, in your life that you respect and listen to them too. I think it's a, you know, it's an important thing just in life in general is the listening. We all love to talk, myself included, uh, but, you know, listening is where you grow a lot. And that's one thing I'm constantly working on. And some of the people I admire most in my life, they're the, they're the best listeners, constantly listening, constantly absorbing new information. So, you know, listen to the people you respect and reach out to organizations like the IDA. They, they will put you in touch with some resource that will help you with the problem, whether it's an insurance issue or, you know, you're just not profitable. I guarantee you they can put you in touch with somebody who you can relate to or a resource that can guide you through that, that process. And uh, they said, be, be open-minded and listen. Uh, if you want to go in there and you're only willing to change this tiny little bit of yourself, it, it might be challenging, but if you go in there with an open mind and, you know, listen to somebody who's walked in your footsteps, you know, there's probably a lot to be gained from that. No, I like it. hundred percent agree. So as far as um, being able to get a hold of you, um, mm -hmm. not maybe you directly, but I know that's obviously <laughs> detailandimage.com, yep. but is there, if somebody did want to get a hold of you, Greg, is there, is there an option for that? Absolutely. Well, first off, our social media pages, we're, we're on them and active all the time, too. So at Detailed Image for Twitter, you know, uh, Facebook, etc. Uh, you can get a hold of me at Greg at Detailed Image .com. If you want to get a hold of my team, support at Detailed Image .com, I'll get right back to you. I'm on email way too often. So, uh, you know, hit me up on there. Anytime you need something, we're there. You can hit us up through the website, Detailed Image .com. We're on there all the time and weekends and everything. We have customer service that answers uh, emails on Sundays. So, uh, you know, we're, we're on there a lot and I love communicating with, with people and customers. So I welcome any feedback, any questions, if anybody wants any business advice or anything like that too, I have those conversations. I've helped lots of detailers and people who want to start up brands, you know, hit me up and ask me questions. And I'm always happy to, you know, lend my two cents to the topic. Not that I know it all by any means, but you know, the little I've learned, I'm happy to share. Awesome. And of course that ask a pro blog. Yes. Get, please hit that yeah. up. Yeah. Oh, lot, lot to be learned on there too. 1500 and 50 plus articles on there. So yeah. lots of, lots of content on there. Very good resource for both detailers getting in and well-seasoned details either mm -hmm. or. So yeah, absolutely. I agree with that. Well, Greg, thank you. And thank you for being, you know, uh, on the podcast and being number 49 as we've gained numbers, this has gotten more and more fun. Um, and now not being able to go to shows, not seeing people being able to yes, see them exactly. this way is nice as well. So yeah, and thank, thank you so much for having me. I, I look forward to listening to more podcasts and keep up the great work you guys are doing as well. Awesome. And on behalf of Buff and Shine, thank you. And thank everybody who took the time to listen and or watch. So I'm going to sign off and you have a good rest of your day. And of course, we appreciate you taking your time to spend with us. Thanks. I appreciate it. All right. Take care.